Hi! Welcome back to Just Checks Out, and this is my May wrap-up, where I talk about books that I have, in fact, backed out. No, this is a whole thing. So for me, May was a huge month because I finally got back to reading like I normally would. And that's huge for me because reading has been very difficult since I began pregnant, since I had COVID, since... I don't know, the pandemic, it's just kind of been like off and on. Last year I read a ton, but a ton of short stories. And this year I've been only able to really read audiobooks for the most part, I've discovered. So finding new things that I really enjoy has kind of been fun. So I read 22 books this month, which is probably the most I've read all year. Heck, that's like double what I read for the first like four months combined, I think. So here are some stats and some overviews. I did my first vlog. It's for a contemporary YA. It is for Stars Like Wings, a full love story. Full love story, sorry. I ended up liking one more than the other and so forth. And I talked about that in the vlog, so I'm not going to go too deeply into them. But I also read I'll Be the One, an audiobook form from Scribd, to make it a three book to kind of, kind of like fill it out a little bit better. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I will link all that information below. I also read three books for my Deconstructing Damsels, which is my romance podcast. I read that, and that one was for kind of like a series because it was AAPI month, and I wanted to kind of incorporate that in, and I'd never read J.C. Lee, so I was very interested. I know people have been reading more for contemporary ones. that so They've been talking about them a little bit more, but I kind of wanted to go back to the category romances because I love them. So I wrote, I will link that below, and I'll talk about them a little bit in my wrap-up, but the bulk of that will go on there because that was the whole point of it. I also read two short romances for my patrons, which I will not talk about on this for the most part because that is for patrons, and I don't want to take that away. And I was like, that was a pretty interesting thing. I also found a new auto by author, which you will learn about later on in this video. And we also found out we're having a little girl. And her name is Nora. It's short for Leonora, Leonora Ray. And we're very excited to see her when she arrives. I'm at 26 -ish weeks when this goes up, maybe 27. So it'll be a little while longer, but it's getting to be closer and closer. And we're very excited over this. My husband just kind of goes giddy over it. And I actually wrote, talked about this a little bit in one of my episodes. I wish I could see more men in romances talking about that because I think it's. Kind of like there's this infantilization where men are not interested until the baby arrives, blah, 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 blah. And it's kind of like reinforced when there's nothing that shows a positivity. And I don't think that's accurate for a lot of dads. I think a lot of dads really are interested in what their wife and what their daughter and son or children are going through in that moment. So that's another thing entirely. So now we'll go to a little bit more. Breakdowns. I read one middle grade, four YA, and 17 adult. The middle grade I will talk about later on as well, the YAs and all those, but those are actually pretty good. I don't always get a middle grade or a YA, but I've been trying to clear out my shelf, and these two are on my shelf, and I can get them in audiobook form, so I wanted to get them and go. Again, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but the format I had, <laughs> this is interesting, I had 18 audiobooks, one ebook, two combo hybrid type things, and one physical. So, not too bad, actually. Kind of impressed with that, to be honest. Wasn't expecting it. I usually don't read physical copy. Now we'll get to the ratings. And the, <laughs> the ratings are interesting because I only had two DNFs. And I wasn't expecting to actually have those, but I ended up having those and, you know, kind of getting rid of them. I put them in a book box. I think I have it maybe on my Instagram, which will be linked below, but... I went to the book box and I put some of them away and got some more to see how that goes. And that was Pleasure Unbound. Okay, I DNF that book because in the first two chapters, it's basically non-consensual sexual activities. And I'm just not here for that. And it was, it was, I didn't like the way it was written. So I pushed that out. It was having a, re the, the book had been written quite a while ago and it was having a research last year. And Bookstagram and I got it in a book box that I got a whole bunch of other books in, but didn't feel like keeping it, passed it along. There aren't that many English books in our book boxes here because it's not like a little free library. It's this huge 
big box and I'll probably try and fit, put more video in there as it gets to be summer because it's easier to get to them. But there's not a lot of English books so if I can pass them on. Some of the ones I bought over here I've even donated and put in the box already just to see what we can get. And some of the other ones, the better ones, I'll probably try and sell. Maybe, maybe not. Just as depends on if it costs. It's worth it. The other one that I DNF was A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allen Dita? Allen Dita? I wanted to like it, but I got 31% of the way in listening to the audiobook and I couldn't. It was like reading, it was like a, getting a history lesson without any of the character. And in a historical fiction, I need to have the character. Also, that's very important to me, and there was nothing there that I felt important to. So that one had to go. And then the one star books were Weather by Jenny Ophel, which is the physical book I read. I got it from the library before my library card ran out. So here we have to buy it every year, and it's like $26. And right now, I could go to Scribd and get books that are on audiobook. It's much better for me, and I just choose to do that price-wise. Because the audiobooks, there's very limited sources here. And I'm really not a James Patterson fan. And that's kind of the, the style that you mostly find in our library's audiobook files. And so I just choose to put my money elsewhere right now. And I gave it one star because it was just meandering. There was no real thought to it. It was written about the 2016 election, which, okay, valid. Like, I, I wasn't happy about that one either. But... It, just, it felt very disconnected and I there was nothing I could grab onto. The main character felt very self-indulgent at times and I just, I one star. And the other one was for my patrons and it was Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin. I know a lot of people love Jack Harbin, but I just did not like either character. I felt like they were both too easily fixed with any other character in the book. And I felt like the main character was okay, but the love interest was very toxic and alpha at times, and I just I don't don't do those at all ever. So that one was out. And then I only had one two star this month, and that was I'll be the one in the YA blog, which again will be linked below. And that one by Lily Lee just it felt unfinished. It felt like there was too much on the there was too much focus on the romance, but not enough on what was going on in the competition because it's supposed to be about a Korean singer. And I just, I did not like it. I felt like it was just missing a lot of the subtleties in it. It was, just, it was like about a, a fat girl, young woman, I should say, who is trying to make changes. But it, all it did was kind of like reinforce the fat phobia at times. And I felt like the, that it wasn't really accurate for the character. And it was also a, a Korean superstar show or whatever. And it just, it was just missing a lot of things to make it kind of gel. And I think it was overly long for what we were reading. And I felt like the romance was taking up way too much time to not deal with the aspect of the, you know, combating fat phobia. And I, just, I didn't feel like it was good. And I know I'm not the YA audience, so it's not that. It's just, it felt like it was missing something for the age group it was written for. And then I have quite a, I have two, two and a half stars. So the first one is Awful Misattraction, which is also for my damsel sing, so I'm not going to go into that. An Unexpected Scandal by Jules Bennett, which is also for a patron, so I'm not going to go too deeply in these. But both, basically, they're both category romances, and you usually get a high or a low sometimes, and these were just lows because I feel like it was just missing a lot of the important elements to make a book really stick. And I felt like it just it didn't work. Again, I will links below. And then for the three stars. So I'm going to make it clear because I, I realized on Bookstagram people don't realize. A three star for me with a contemporary romance is actually pretty darn good. It takes a lot to get there and for me to like it. It's actually a really big deal. So please don't think if I get something a three star, it means middle of the road. It just means that for me, it solves what it needs to do, but it doesn't go above and beyond. And so I want to make that clear because, again, people were thinking I didn't like something and I did. I very much enjoy it. So I read Remedial Rocket Science on Audio by Susanna Nix and I love Susanna Nix like she's one of those romance writers I really enjoy they're usually lighter books or if they have dark if they have heavier topics they're still light like they're not overly into something and I really appreciated this it was I felt like sometimes the character was a little bit too old so or rather it was reading a little bit too old for the actual age of being you know 
post undergrad. Maybe she should have been like post grad or something. She just felt a little bit too not quite the right age for the what was going on in the story. That was one thing that kind of dinged it down. A lot of these reviews are also on my bookstagram, so you can always find a more detailed list there. But overall, I thought it was pretty good. I felt like you know there were some things that could be worked on, but for a debut novel, it actually was pretty good, especially for a contemporary romance. There was a lot of elements to it that really worked. And again, I like Susanna Nix, so this was a good thing for me. And then I read Temporary Wife Temptation by J.C. Lee. Again, part of the you know damsel thing, so I'm not going to go too deeply in it. But mostly, what I really liked was it was a, again about like needing something in order to get something done for both parties. And I think they did a really good job of that. So I'm here for it. And the last one I read was another Susanna Nix, which was an arc for Lucky Star. And Lucky Star was actually really good. I want to make that clear. I think that, again, some people take my criticisms as bad, but I just mean that they can be better. And my dog agrees with me. So I loved it. I love getting arcs from Susanna. But I love Susanna. I like, again, how she writes. And I think that Lucky Star had a lot of really good things. Like, if you like Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, you're probably going to like this book. I think if sometimes the romance is a little bit too quick. But I think that overall, it was a very well done book. And again, I love to talk about her, you know, read about her. I'm actually about doing an episode of Deacon Shark Dams was about Susanna Nix because again, I've read quite a few of her books by now. She's got quite a list of like these are the Hollywood ones, the ones from remedial sciences, from STEM heroines. It's, it's a nice mix of different <laughs> different ways women work. My dog is really unhappy. Okay, so the three and a half star was fumbled by Alex Martin, and that was the second in the Denver Mustang series. I'm going to do an episode of that on Deconstruction Damsels in June, so I don't want to talk about it too much, but basically I thought it was a really well done book. I like, again, it's like a single mother seemed to be coming up this month for me in romance, but like I was talking about like the CTI and you know how the, the brain works and football and how it can have serious consequences and like why she didn't want her son to be in football. I thought it was a really well done, well established work. And I thought, you know, Three and a Half Stars was great. For this particular book. I can't wait to read the rest of the series. There's at least two more in the series. I'm just waiting to get to it at some point <laughs> through Scribd because that, my library does not have them. My library had the first two, so I went through that. And then there was a Secret Crush Seduction, which is on damsels, and that one I'm not going to go too deeply in either because I have a whole episode on the podcast for it. But basically what I liked about it is it talked about neurodivergent needs and one of the things I really enjoyed was they talked about like clothing for people that have issues with sensory and tactile touch. And you, you don't hear about that that much. And this was written in 2020. Well, it was published. It was probably written in 2019. And I, I, I appreciated that the fact that, you know, this is going up and up and up. So I really enjoyed that. I feel like the romance was pretty solid. The lead character was amazing. Then <laughs> the next one was Fa Love Story. That. Also one that I'll be selling or donating because I did not feel like keeping it. I feel like it was a really well done story. Like, but I think it was doing too much at once because you had two families who knew each other in Korea, then they immigrated to the US and the story kind of unfolds and things come out. But I feel like it was missing something. I think it was missing something within the, like the feudal aspect of this enemies of lovers that it's supposed to be, or you know, at least not friends. And I feel like it was kind of missing something along the line. I think that they did a really good job of establishing the Korean-American community within L.A., and I appreciated that. I thought that was really great. I just wish the romance had either been shorter or non-existent, and they'd just been friends. It just it didn't feel like a romance to me. And then the next, the, well, the last three next part was surprising for me, and that was Run, Rose, Run by James Patterson and Dolly Parton. Again, I was on the waiting list on... Uh, Libby and I grabbed it and I was like yay okay so what I really liked about this one was the Nashville aspect like you could tell Dolly had really contributed a lot to this particular book it really stood out unfortunately I think it also had a little bit of too much in the in the undercurrents and the subplots and stuff like that because in it the lead character 
is trying to start over and she's doing some things and it makes sense, but it feels a little bit fast and it feels a little bit too, too squished timelines for what she's getting, if you know anything at all about uh, Nashville and how long it can take to break out, how long it takes to find your way. This did not. I can see where it was going and I can definitely see the Dolly influences really well. The audio was great in the fact that there was like different cast for different characters and made it so easy to keep up with who was who was who because there's quite a wide list of characters in this particular book because it is a James Patterson. I wish it had been a little bit more streamlined and I wish because it was like I think it was like around 400 pages I think and I think it should have been okay again three and a half stars is not bad I just was expecting more from what was being offered in the book. If you like while Justice Sleeps, you probably will somewhat like this. It's definitely got the country feel, the country music feel to it, so that's not a bad thing. Four stars. We're getting there. Four stars is While Justice Sleeps by Stacey Abrams. This one was a really good one, and I loved the thriller aspect of it. I think that it just may be overshot sometimes, but I can definitely see where her influence comes in and where her knowledge about certain stories comes in so i think that's amazing i thought that you know if maybe if they shortened it or maybe if they shortened it or made it another 150 pages made it a duology i think it would have worked better so it's set up about the supreme court and what happens if a supreme court justice is basically incapacitated but still not dead so there's no leeway for there's no like repercussions for this within the, the American legal system. And Stacey would know this because she is a lawyer. She has worked in the Georgia political system. She's who I'm voting for in November. So there's there's a whole lot there. And I feel like it was a really good, solid thriller. Like if you want a good legal thriller, this is a book for you. I only knocked it down because I feel like, again, it felt like it was a little bit over overachieving in some areas. But I think that for the idea of it really worked. And then you had Earth Eater by Dolores Reyes, which was translated by Julia Sanchez. Oh my god, I was not expecting this book. So I picked it up because it looked like something that Elizabeth from Reading Riley would read. Because it had this great cover, which you know you'll see somewhere up here. And I just I felt like it was doing a really good job of describing femicide in Argentina and the feminist view of, of what it was like and what happens if you can eat earth and see where people are see how they died stuff like that like how does that affect you how does all that bombardment kind of recreate itself in your life amazing i listened to the audiobook again because most of these are audiobooks and terrific honestly like even though it's not a five star it's probably gonna go in one of my top reads for the year because it was just so uniquely done and I think that the only reason I didn't give it a little bit higher or lower is, is because the American language and the English language does not have the same connotations with gendered words. So I think it could, that kind of like takes it away a little bit. I think if I could read the original and understand it, it probably would have been a five star, to be honest. And the translator did an amazing job, too. Do not get me wrong on that. And then I read Letter to My Rage by Lydia Yakunovich, I think. Yakunovich. And that one was also about the, the, uh, the election and the rage and the attack on women's rights. If you notice, there's kind of a theme here this month. Didn't plan it that way. Just kind of whatever I was mood reading, I read. Except for my TBR list for a couple of these. And I thought it was very interesting to see how the rage was formatting and how it was changing. And I think it was doing what Weather was trying to do, but it didn't do it as badly. It created a much more coherent statement of what it wanted to say to do all of this. And then we have our five stars. And there are five five stars. That's saying something this month because I don't give them out very often. First we have Opie's Ghost by Justina Ireland. I have a review of that up. I will link that below so I will not go too deeply into it but I felt like set in the 1920s Pittsburgh it's about a girl who is basically a medium who can see things that she doesn't know what how to handle what to do because her life has been turned upside down because she is not originally from Pittsburgh. She's forced to flee north after something happens to her family. I thought it was a really well done middle grade. And I think there needs to be more of those. So highly recommend. Again, I will link my short review down below. Then I read Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. 
this seems to be a very polarizing book on booktube because I know Bethany and Frolic Through Friction, through friction um, both were kind of slightly disappointed in it, but for me, it gave me what I needed. Like, I didn't expect the horror aspect. I expected the mystical aspect, and I expected the folklore aspect to be not quite as dark, and I think that made a difference. But Metal and Bone, I thought was fantastic. I was just, I was so amazed by it. I'm actually going to buy it and put it on my shelf. And I probably going to buy like maybe four new books a year now, if that. Like, so it's a huge deal to put it on my shelf. I was that impressed with it. The, the atmosphere, the ambiance, it had a very, if you like Terry Pratchett, it's probably going to appeal more to you than if you want something like a Stephen King. And that's a very big difference and a very different wide variety of this, right? So I highly recommend it if you, again, like something that's got more of an esoteric view versus more of a concrete view. And then we have Scars Like Wings right here, which is not coming off my shelf anytime soon. This one took me about 50% to get into it, but oh my god, I talked about it in the blog, but I want to give a little bit of backstory to this. So it gets very graphic in the descriptions of what the main character has gone through. And it, you know, it can get kind of like difficult to read. But overall, I think it really, really works, to be honest. And I was just so floored by this book. Again, I will let you link to that below, but it's really good. I was not expecting it, and I hadn't really seen anyone talking about it yet, because it came out again like 2019, like some of these other ones, so they've kind of cycled through. Then I read A Women in Salt by Gabriela Garcia. Again, a polarizing book, and I didn't realize that, but I listened to the audio, and I think I got more out of it because I am an immigrant. Again, I'm a white immigrant, so it's a completely different statement. But I am an immigrant, and so where I'm living now, I, I still have very much a deep connection to where I am and where I'm from. And I can see where you can want better because that's one of the reasons I came. Like I wanted better for my kids and a kid who is currently kicking me at the moment. But I wanted that and I, I want something better and I want something deeper and stronger for my kids. But I also want something better for me, something that's got more options that is less um, chaotic we'll say about the U.S. system right now. And so I understood that, and I am considered one of the good immigrants because I come from America, I'm white, I have an education, so there are things that I can get that other people may not be able to get access to as easily, and I'm aware of that privilege. And I think that that kind of observation made me understand the book a little bit more because in this one it's talking about Cubans coming to America and also a Honduran lady, I think, trying to come to America and keep getting deported. And there's this, there's this very interesting conversation about this. And I think that more people probably should be having the conversation. And I think it's very polarizing from what I can see in the reviews. And I think part of the polarization is, is people do not want to admit to the class system and the race system that comes within immigration in the U.S. because it's not easy. So I fully love this book. It was amazing. I definitely understood what was going on with the story, and I think maybe some other people did not. Then we have one more book left, and that is another T. Kingfisher. And this, by the way, is something that I said is going to be an auto buy, auto read. So this is The Seventh Bride, and it's based on the Bluebeard story, you know, the folklore, that, that element of it where the character is the seventh bride, not by choice. She's basically bullied into it because of power dynamics. Again, this whole month is full of this one. Anyway, the character is forced into this role, but along the way, she's learning about how to do things and maybe how to get out of this in this very like magical world where things are not always what they seem. It had a lot of strong characterizations, each of the wives were very different. They all suffered different ways. And it was just, it was a it was a very interesting take on it because this one had more of the horror elements, I think, that maybe someone was expecting. It's a YA, probably an older YA. I'm definitely going to say this is a great one. Give it five stars. There were scenes that just kind of I can see in my mind still, and they're very haunting. And you don't always get that. 
it's my kind of a book and you'll hear more about that in June because I've been reading another one that's very similar in this style, different but similar in the fact that there's a lot of psychological elements and twist and turny elements. I love this. I had a really great month. I was surprised by how much I read. I was not expecting to read this much. You know, God bless two and a half to three times speed for audiobooks. It's easy for me to hear that at that speed because that's how I process when I read. I read very quickly. And so this keeps up with that. I am amazed as I get at five stars. I'm just, I'm so happy that I had such a good month. Even though that there was a lot of lower numbers, that's okay because the lower, lower numbers are also good because it doesn't what I like and don't like. So I'm cool with that. I'm wondering how your Maeve reading went because mine obviously went really well. Drop me some comments below. Tell me like what was your top reads of the month? What really stood out to you? Even like good or bad? Or did you have any highly anticipated books and disappointed or just went above and beyond? Just let me know. You know, like, subscribe, hit the bell. The whole thing everybody says on YouTube. And I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.